Do you want your masters to sound great and you're in search for the best maximizer or limiter on the audio market? Yeah, me too. Hey, I'm Adrian from adrianmile.com and today I'm going to test Waze MM1 from Softube against TC Electronics Brickwall 2 limiter. But before we do that, if you want to improve your mixes and masters in less than 10 minutes, go ahead and download your cheat sheet here. In the meantime, I'll play my awesome intro. Waze MM1 is a maximizer created by Softube and at first glance you can see that uh, there are not many controls which sometimes is great. Why? Because you can focus more on the sound of your project and not on tweaking controls. This maximizer is based on Softube DS1 MK3 plugin, created and based on a real-world hardware used in many audio mastering facilities around the world. This is a mastering tool that can be used as a limiter, de and a compressor. So with MM1 you have a simpler interface specifically designed for audio maximizing jobs. In terms of metering, here's the input section, the gain reduction meter and the output. At the bottom you can choose between different styles like uh, DS for de jobs, wide which can help make your master wider, punch, which adds punch to your master, loud, which is supposed to help you make louder masters, and transparent, which according to the manual and my tests is less invasive than the other styles. Next, there is the bypass button. When you use the MM1 maximizer, you are processing your original mix, usually to get a louder mix or master. With the amount option, you can choose the amount of MM1 processing you want to inject in the MM1 processed mix. If you set the parallel mix to dry, with the amount knob, you can inject more or less of the dry unprocessed mix into your now processed mix or final master. With the wet option, you can inject a percentage of the processed mix, according to the selected style, into the final master. While with the 50-50 option, you can blend the final master with some of the original mix and the processed one. At this point, think of parallel compression for which you can choose different flavors and amounts. Next, we have the limiter gain which you can use to get your master to the desired level. And speaking about levels, if you want to take care about the true peaks, here's where you can do it. As output trim options, you can choose a threshold of up to minus 1 dBFS, which I usually use in my masters. Also, you can zoom in and out the plugin, which is great. There are also some more metering options which you can use on this side of the plugin. Now it's testing time. For this test, I have a mix produced and mixed by my brother Vlad and I will test the Waze MM1 maximizer against my favorite limiter at the moment, TC Electronics Brickwall 2 limiter from System 6000. When I choose a limiter for a mastering job, I usually go for transparency. Depending on the mix, I usually want the limiter I use in my masters to be as transparent as possible, to keep the work done at the recording, producing and mixing stages almost untouched. Of course, this is not always possible, but my intention is always enhancing the mix and make it sound the best it can and in a transparent manner. For this mix, on the MM1 I set the threshold to minus 1 dBFS, then set the style to transparent because it is more transparent than other styles. On the Brickwall 2, I set the threshold to minus 1 dBFS as well. Now, let's listen. So far both versions sound pretty much the same as there is not much processing going on.
In this section, even if there is not that much processing happening yet, I hear the mixed stereo image tighten in the case of MM1, while the brick wall 2 keeps the space of the mix almost intact. In this case, I hear a greater difference between the two masters. I hear the vocals are brought in front of the mix in the case of MM1. In fact, I hear everything is brought in the front. A lot of the space between the elements of the mix is gone and the top end loses its shine. In the case of the brick wall, the vocals remain in their position, while the other elements of the mix don't fight for space. In this section, I hear less of stereo image and space in the MM1 case, and the top end is more aggressive and processed in an unpleasant way. The brick wall maintains the stereo image and the space of the mix, while keeping the top end clean. While the MM1 brings almost everything to the front, while tightening the mix stereo image. If you like limiters as I do, you can find in other episodes of mine that I discovered that there are limiters on the market that add unnecessary loudness at softer mix parts. Fortunately, this is not the case with MM1. Ok, let's listen some more. To me, the brickwall version sounds more natural and less processed than the MM1. While there is some light distortion going on, the top end is much cleaner than the MM1 version. As I mentioned, for this test I set the output trim to minus 1 dBFS, so technically the true peaks should not go over this threshold. But as in the case of most software limiters, this is not always the case. If we analyze the loudness of the master, while the loudness is minus 9.8 laughs, we can see that the max true peak levels reach 0.1 dBFS, that is 1.1 dB more than the threshold I set on the MM1. If we repeat the test with the brick wall 2, we have a loudness of minus 9.9 laughs or LKFS and a max true peak of minus 0.9 dBFS, so a 0.1 dBFS difference than the minus 1 dBFS threshold I set. Now, if I really want to set the max true peak to minus 1 dBFS for this master, I can bring down the threshold on the brick wall 2 limiter, but not on the MM1 because the trim goes only up to minus 1 dBFS. So if you really need to take care of those true peaks, you should take this into consideration. Now, when using MM1, you look at the meters and you may say, I set the threshold to minus 1 dBFS, the meters show me that I am 
at minus 1 dBFS, so I should be good. Well, not really. While the MM1 shows minus 1 dBFS true peak, if you look at the TC Electronics Analyzer, the true peaks reach 0 dBFS. So my recommendation is to get a very good analyzer when mastering. In conclusion, audio mastering is not always an easy straight process. Besides the must-have great processors, you also need to know how and when to use them. But also, audio mastering should not be a complicated voodoo domain you're made to believe it is. This is why I created the Pro Audio Mastering program, where you can learn how to approach audio mastering step by step, so that you can preserve the hard work you put in your mixes and transform them into professional masters. In case you're interested in learning audio mastering, go ahead and enroll in the Pro Audio Mastering program. I'll meet you on the other side. Regarding the MM1 maximizer, I really like the concept and how they created the interface and all of that. However, in terms of sound, I believe there are things missing out. There's too much processing going on, not in a good way, even using the transparent style. Specifically, there's stereo image, 3D space and top end loss, which from my tests is a pretty common thing among software limiters. By the way, this is a 48kHz session, but I did some tests at 96kHz, but the MM1 signature remains even at higher resolutions. Therefore, I will continue my quest of finding the best software limiter that the market has to offer. In fact, I'll test the waste compressor slash limiter to see if the sound is different, so stay tuned. One last thing, tell me what you think about the MM1 maximizer. Let's exchange ideas in the comments below. And of course, subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this. Until next time, stay cool and make great music.